Back in 2005, when I turned 60, I guess I decided I had to prove I was still young <laughs> and uh, decided to climb uh, the Snake Dyke on Half Dome. This is a, an amazing, wonderful, uh, classic climb uh, that's not very hard, but a long wall in Yosemite. My brother-in-law had just recently gotten interested in climbing, uh, Greg, and uh, so I asked him if he'd like to join me in doing it. And so we ended up going out to Riverside and uh, to Big Rock, which uh, <clears throat> is a slab, low angle slab. It's about a very similar angle to the, to the southwest face of Half Dome, about 45, 50 degrees. Anyway, we practiced for uh, a couple of days. And after that, I think Greg decided he wasn't quite ready for that. But I'd spent actually a couple of months getting in shape for that. I was surprised how, how uh, much out of shape I'd come uh, since I had stopped doing serious climbing back in the, uh, the early 80s after climbing, after leading an expedition up uh, uh, the east buttress of, of Mount McKinley. Uh, so uh, after some practicing, I started to feel, you know, get, that, get back in better shape. And uh, then uh, I asked my colleague, Steve Beck, if he would join me because I'd spent the time getting in shape and now I wanted to do the climb. So anyway, the climb is uh, eight pitches, about a thousand feet of climbing. Um, and here this, uh, this topo shows where the belays are at the end of each of the pitch pitches. Uh, the climbing is, uh, is amazingly easy for uh, you know, how smooth Half Dome is on most of it. Uh, it's glacier polished on most of it, except that where these dikes are, that uh, I guess they're fissures, that uh, when, the, uh, granite, when, the, when the lava was underground, it split after it hardened, after it crystallized into granite, and it filled with magma again. And, this, and that eroded to make, this, make these knobby dikes that are very easy climbing. Um, and anyway, this, this here shows on a photograph of the face where the different belay stances are. They're about 150 feet apart. Um, the crux is uh, passing uh, over from one dike to the other, uh, which was on the friction of the dome itself, which is probably the, it's the hardest part of the climbing. Anyway, the approach, uh, we did the approach the day before, um, getting to, driving up to Yosemite Valley from uh, Los Angeles, and uh, then uh, did the approach up to Little Yosemite Valley, where we spent the night, uh, in, uh, where we were going to leave our, um, our sleeping bag and everything. And then, uh, then there's a cross-country approach to it. The approach is kind of tricky. It's uh, up some steep slabs that uh, a little hard to find your route, but uh, we managed to do it pretty, we were lucky and managed to uh, to find our way up to the base of the climb without too much trouble. Um, this is this shows the rest of the trail going up the Little Yosemite Valley, and uh, that's where we camped. Then from there, it's just cross country to uh, uh, to get to the base of the dome. Uh, you sort of walk toward the dome past Lost Lake, and uh, uh, then up the slope a bit, and then you start to traverse left. Uh, and there are some, some cairns marking the trail um, and uh, uh, to the base of the climb. It's pretty obvious where the base of the climb is. The climb is so popular that often you'll see other people on the climb. And in this case, there was a party ahead of us um, that uh, was already on the route as we were making the approach to the base of the climb. Uh, here you can see, as we're coming around the corner, you can see one of the climbers on the climb. This is the, uh, uh, this shows, uh, there, this, 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 well, you, there, you, there you can see the dike, one of the the main dike that you climb, and how knobby it is. Um, and uh, let's see, here's a party that's uh, ahead of us doing the. Uh, I think there were actually a couple parties ahead of us already. It's amazing how popular this climb is, uh, considering how long the approach is. But it's such a wonderful climb that it is extremely popular. Um, and then let's see the. Uh, and uh, this is Steve roping up. Uh, I actually did a, uh, the first pitch I did on some friction over to the left, which isn't the standard route. I, it looked easier to me. It turned out it was harder. 
And when Steve uh, tried to do it, his his boot soles were kind of oxidized, and he actually couldn't uh, couldn't stick to the friction. And so I gave him a little bit of tension to get him over the uh, that. I think then I I went back and climbed it three years later, and then then I did the more regular route, and uh, it was a little bit easier. Um, anyway, uh, here you can see it's not this steep. Um, uh, the the angle again, as I said, is like 45 to 50 degrees. It's uh, uh, you know very comfortable low angle, very similar to the angle of the the cable route on the on the other side of the dome. This is the here's the crux. You can see the friction going from one dike to the other. Um, that's a, actually a route finding uh, trick. There is is knowing where to transfer. Uh, people often uh, it's hard to leave the security of the knobby dike to do the friction to go across. But there's a bolt there that sort of marks where you uh, where you leave the dike, and uh, then uh, uh, here's Steve with the party behind us. Um, I, th I think this is like on the third or fourth pitch. Uh, there's huge, long, long runouts between the bolts. They're about like 75 feet, but the climbing is so easy. It's uh, um, it's more like fourth class climbing than uh, than fifth class climbing. Uh, except for a few spots, and uh, uh, and the, those spots that are a little trickier are well protected. As the day progressed, it was pretty hazy, and uh, I don't know if there was a fire somewhere, but the valley filled with haze, and uh, it became harder to look down the valley. You can see, uh, you have a nice view of El Capitan. Uh, at the top, there are these huge exfoliation slabs that you uh, climb up uh, through. Uh, once you've gotten to the top, uh, there's a, a long hike up the gradually lessening angle of the dome. Uh, you know, it, it seems to take forever. It's amazing how long it takes to get to the top of the dome once you've finished the climb. Uh, but then, of course, there's a beautiful panorama here. Again, you can see how hazy it had become. Uh, as you look off into the distance, um, uh, there's some nice views of uh, high Sierra peaks. You can see some glaciers nestled in among uh, some of the peaks. And uh, there you can see some glaciers uh, that just passed through the picture. And uh, uh, it, was un it was too bad that it wasn't clear, because uh, uh, I know it's, a, it's an amazing view from the top of Half Dome. So uh, uh, we... I uh, sat down and had some lunch or uh, on the top of the dome. Uh, there was plenty of time to, um, to take our time uh, on the top of the dome after finishing the climb. Uh, there were some people that had hiked up the cables, even though the, uh, the cables were down. And the, they'd taken the boards down that uh, they're about 15 feet apart from one another. And uh, uh, the people could pull themselves up on the cables to get to the, to the summit. Uh, and uh, it was kind of late in the season, so I guess they'd taken the cables down because there, there is a chance that there could be a snowstorm this late in the season. And uh, so then after uh, uh, we got to the top, we looked down the northwest face. That's uh, something I guess I had uh, at one point considered climbing, but I'm, I think I'm over the hill now. <laughs> it's beyond my reach now. But... Uh, um, there was, uh, uh, it's, it is breathtaking to look down, down, down the northwest face. The, um, you continue over the dome and, and, uh, then you find where the cables are. Um, and we, I think we brought some gloves to, uh, help us down the cables. You just, uh, can hang on to the cables with your, and here, here's where, here's the top of the northwest face. Um looking down, down to the valley. Uh, spectacular, breathtaking view. Looking up, uh, up the valley past, I guess, I don't think you can see quarter domes there. Anyway, here are the cables, uh, just laying against the rock. And uh, there you can see some other hikers uh, pulling themselves up the cables. Uh, near the bottom there was a person that was pretty freaked out. He uh, felt really uneasy and uh, was kind of frozen there. It was uneasy going up or down. 
I don't know if he's still there. <laughs> but uh, um, uh, anyway, after we got down, then you have a long hike back down to the valley. It's like 10 miles. And, uh, yeah, I know. He didn't like heights. Anyway, uh, this is Steve. Okay. Uh, not so, a real good photograph with his big back. What do you say? Yes. Hallelujah. <laughs> you can't see him very well. And then here's this warning that it's uh, uh, if they're clouds, it's it's uh, considered to be dangerous on half dome because of lightning. Uh, we had hoped to hike down uh, and back down to the valley. We made a reservation at uh, Camp Curry for a tent cabin, but uh, uh, but we didn't quite make it. We just made it to the top of the falls where we decided to spend the night. Um, after we got back to our uh, sleeping bags and packs and uh, uh, spent uh, a nice night um, at the top of the falls there. Uh, here's one of the rocks that you can hike past. There's, the, there's Half Dome again showing the, the snake dike route. And you can see, you can see the, the dikes as the veins uh, running up the side of the peak. Um, then uh, uh, that's Nevada Falls. And uh, looking back at it is, um, or no, is that Vernal Falls? I'm not sure. I don't remember. Anyway, this is the, an alternate approach to, to get up to the climb, is to hike up uh, between uh, Mount Broderick and the Liberty, Liberty Cap. Um, I read some accounts of people that make that approach, which uh, uh, goes to more directly to the face uh, or to the beginning of the climb, as opposed to going up to Little Yosemite Valley. And uh, now this is Vernal Falls here, uh, which is, you know, the end of this late in the season, it was just a trickle coming over the, uh, over the cliff. Anyway, this was really an amazing climb, and I, I highly recommend it. And, uh, anyway, if, if this was a help, uh, please um, say that you like it, uh, and leave a comment. Thanks.